<coughs> hello there again my friends fellow game enthusiasts gms gurus and all us and all of sundry yeah that man's greasy work sweater uh my continuing entry into my 30-day world hashtag whatever said what deities dwell in your realm are they involved sometimes my own handwriting is my worst enemy i'm mean, like handwriting is very bad what as i've been telling as by now you know if you've been watching my any of my videos and you've followed my entry into this particular challenge that my game setting of choice is set a settled space and my game system of stellar frontiers i.e interstellar frontiers whichever working title gets approved uh the topic of deities first off <sighs> And I'm going to get off into a sidebar tirade about religion, okay? I was raised Christian. I'm a born-again Christian. I am not practicing Christian. I don't care for the politics of the church. Not, I have no problems with the faith, but the politics of the church is problematic. And then we have the uh, concepts of religion in general. There's too, too many competing religions that all agree pretty much on the same sort of thing except they want to make sure that you agree with they, with what they agree with at the extreme and if that means taking a knife to you and yours so be it we see too much of that so when i sat down to create my backstory for my game world i gave some furious thought about how religion might be viewed in the future and we're talking eight millennia from now how much would it have evolved? I believe uh, that religion as an organization will have devolved to some degree, but the lines between organized religion and organized terrorism uh, have overlapped a lot. So by definition, uh, the sheer volume of potential religions that could be available because the individual house lord has the right to cater to his or her own choices. And in that aspect, if they wish to have their version of religion, uh, they've created their own genetic race or their own alien race and they're basing their house off of it. And they wish to have their own uh, theology then the game should allow for that sort of thing without belaboring it. So I lumped everything together under the category of cults. And I am fully aware of what the definition of cult is and its preconceptions and conceptions of the general public. And frankly, I still think it applies. In this aspect, there are no one grand and one grand all-inspiring galactic religion. There's no orange Bible. There's no cosmic Catholic church or something that like of that nature that dominates the politics or economies or uh, media of settled space. That said, there are an innumerable innumerable amount of them so many of them small some of them quite large and potent uh, some of them cross boundaries into what would be non theologic behavior if you will uh, one of my chief bad guys in uh, cell space especially in the region where my house it was my beta house and my beta testers were operating and or are still operating in and it's called the OTP the one true path and it is treated like a religion. They themselves don't call themselves a religion, but they have all the trappings and earmarks of a traditional archaic religion. And from that perspective, their goal is to keep humanity pure, human, humans human, and keep them on the path that the great creator, the great God, the great guru, God himself, God herself, what have you, where have you, in the dim regions of, regions of, uh, regions of the past, the dim recesses of the past, uh, where that's their dogma, that's their manifesto. To that end, that makes them very dangerous people. In competition, or alongside them the Katarans which are an alien feline based race 
quite prevalent. Probably the second largest or the first largest alien, true alien race that's now capable or interstellar capable, thanks to the Terrans and their and their uh, their uh, early days of involvement in trade and inter intermingling with the Katarans. The uh, Katarans have their own religion. They actually have several. But the key one that predominates in uh, the area that where our, our beta testing is what took place is called uh, the followers of Suri, and Suri is this is this feline goddess. She is pretty all about the hedonistic ways that promote self enjoyment to a certain extent. This is the typical feline mindset where we we meditate by basking in the in the sun even if it's an artificial sun we lounge around certain portions of the day we take naps we take frequent naps we are aloof when we wish to be we are cuddly and and demanding when we wish to be and we are typical of just about every feline behavior you can think of and then there was another group that propped up called the enlightened the enlightened would be the equivalent of a neo-futuristic version of the hippie commune mindset. These individuals uh, create uh, uh, monasteries and, and communes with the purpose of being uh, in introspective and to develop human or alien enlightenment of the cosmos and existence and being and who we are and where we're going and what we will be and where we've been and in the process and, and along the way they cultivate life uh, they're not they don't have uh, a crusader wing they don't have uh, missionaries going out and shoving their beliefs down over the people's throats what they do is they come in, they set up a little, uh, you know, in remote areas, and they cultivate exotic materials and substances. Uh, they they produce wines and and liquors and 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 other recreational products. They do craft work and 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 some of them do high tech programming and whatever to generate funds to support their way of life. And, and they provide little islands of serenity and some otherwise potentially chaotic existence and that's just three of a dozen or so that have cropped up but no one true domineering religion so are there gods are there goddesses so on? uh yes and no i don't have a pananthalon i don't have a list of of deities to worship we don't have a race there's no clerics they don't have a class if you will now, if your house, if you as the player choose to try to develop that sort of thing in the game, there's sub, there's sub mechanics that might work for you. You make some adjustments to your house instead of a house lord. You might be a prior, and so on and so forth. But there's some laws on the books for the Imperium, and one of them uh, from prior problems where organized religion became too powerful, became too ingrained and, and involved in politics where it almost brought down an imperium. It almost brought the government to its knees. And so the emperors of that era dictated that religions, that cults just like guilds are not allowed to officially settle and colonize worlds. They're not allowed to create their own entities, their own governments per se, no, their own territory. They're not allowed to, to create a, a, an empire of their own and be in direct competition with the nobility. So the nobility's done taking steps to make sure that they remain the, the top of the pecking order by controlling who can and cannot create official colony, colonized planets. That's not to say that they don't happen. Most trade worlds are a collage of different guilds and corporations thrown in with some, uh, uh, maybe some, excuse me, some other entities as well as uh, cults who have populated a specific planet in large enough numbers to warrant having some kind of board of directors overseeing the operations of the plant. 
in, te in theory. This, these are protectorates of the Imperium because they're trade worlds. This is a, a, a neutral territory for everybody to come and trade and sell and buy and do business. The, thus, no one particular guild can lay claim to the planet. Then there's the exceptions to the rule. There are plenty of guilds. Politech is considered a shystier guild and our sector of the beta tested uh, section of the frontier. And they are notorious for using uh, indigenous uh, races and uh, for, for uh, oh, I, I use the term loosely slave labor because it's not true. They're paid, but indentured servants, right? Uh, forced labor. And they also have are known for creating genetic, uh, genetic uh, uh, have known in the past have created uh, genetic manipulations of the human body, i.e., genomes to serve in those same roles. Much cheaper to have the company store uh, effect than it is to outright hire and employ people in a free market in their mindset. And along a different route, they will become in they will they will approach newer houses and try to get them into that company store effect we will help you achieve your goals we'll help you expand your planet and your and your your colonies we will provide you with all kinds of material and, and services at a, at a re, at a reduced rate in exchange for you know uh, having uh, first dibs on on uh building factories or exploiting resources and, and it's to some degree even taking over the administration of planets, just like some cults do the same thing. Uh, for reasons unknown to our backstory, the OTP has taken over the administrative duties of a penal, a penal planet uh, operated by the Imperium called Torpin II, and for their purposes, the OTP uses this as a opportunity to brainwash and condition would-be crusaders, soldiers, for their their own purposes. And going on that for a second, the crusaders are the militant orders or militant arms of any cult i.e. religion, and that's the term we utilized there. I chose to use was Crusaders, so yeah, in the case of the OTP, probably a good significant portion of them are Crusaders in either the political mindset or in the physical form. The OTP actually manifests armies. They have ground forces. They have a navy. They have uh, star navies that, that they spread about. They use physical brute force when necessary to achieve their goals and aims sometimes to their detriment you know, they, they overstep the bounds and if they overstep it too much uh, one of the great houses will come in and squash their effort or the imperium themselves will squash their effort you know every now and then they have to be a, a cult has to be put in its place as far as the, the nobility of the uh, the leadership goes uh, the same thing can be said for guilds. Some guilds become extremely powerful. There are uh, guilds that, in the economic sense, rival the you know, half of the core houses combined because of the sheer amount of resources and economic income finances that they generate. That makes them dangerous to others. Uh, so in their own way, guilds are another form of a neo-religion just the religion of the credit, religion of the, the, the almighty dollar. And we see that in modern day stuff. So, there are no fixed beings, uh, no one religion that's key to the game. And I think that pretty much covers and answers the question.